I'm Minato Sakimori, and I'm 26 years old. I'm currently working at the inn my parents run. Brr, so cold! I live in a really mountainous area, and it snows a lot here every year. Our inn is at the end of a pretty perilous road, and in heavy snowfall, it's impossible to get to by car. When the snow starts piling up, we need to go clear out the snow manually before the snow plows come. I'm wearing heavy-duty mountaineering gear, and it's still freezing. I gotta hurry up and finish this so I can warm up inside. Huh? Is that a, a person? Through the pounding snow, I could barely make out a woman's silhouette. Huh? A ghost? Oh, I'm scared! So, so cold. That voice. That didn't sound like a ghost. That made me ten times more worried. It was five degrees Fahrenheit out here. Even in my expensive gear, I was cold. Someone in ripped light clothes like that could easily freeze to death. Are you okay? Uh, um, fine. He's not fine at all. Uh, my inn is just ahead, come on. Huh? We're here. Um, uh. Get in the bath right now. I'll get you a towel and something to change into while you're soaking in there. Huh? But... Hurry before you freeze to death! Just go! All right. Good. Mom! Minato, did you finish cleaning the snow? Oh, I forgot. Unbelievable. What were you even doing out there? No, I was doing it, but then I saw a middle school girl or something freezing out there all by herself in just a light jacket. What? I brought her in and took her to the hot spring before she fell over from hypothermia. What? What about her family? They must be worried sick. Oh, yeah, but I didn't see anyone else around. And you didn't even bother to ask her? Now that you mention it, I didn't even get her name. She looks like she was about to collapse at any second. I, I can't believe you sometimes. Anyway, we need to get her a towel and a yukata to wear. Right, we can ask her more later. Yeah. Now get back to clearing that snow, okay? Ugh, fine. I'm finally done with the cleaning. Oh, there you are, Minato. Welcome back. Hey, you're looking a lot better now. Yeah, all because of you. Thank you so much. She mentioned her name was Ayane Hironaka. And Minato? What? She's no middle schooler. She's 19, you dummy. I went in expecting a little girl, and I was so embarrassed because of you. Huh? Seriously? She was so small and thin, and her face was so round. I was sure she had to be around middle school age. Hey, I brought you something to eat! Huh? Dad? I thought you'd be hungry, so I asked him to make something. Enjoy this extra special meal, straight from the head chef's hands to your table. Oh my god, you really didn't have to do that for me. Of course we did. We can't just leave a cute girl like you out in the cold. Eat as much as you like. Thank you all so much. She really is as thin as a stick, though. If she's actually 19, what's she been doing until now? Oh my god. I've never had anything this delicious in my whole life. I'm glad to hear it. Don't hold back. Eat your fill. Why are you all being so nice to me? <laughs> because all we want is to see you smiling and looking healthy. <laughs> 
Once Ayane was finished eating, she told us about her situation. I, I used to live with my mom and grandma. They both worked while trying hard to raise me. But one day... Grandma! When I was eight years old, Grandma had worked herself so hard that she ended up passing out at home. I, I gotta call an ambulance. She had an aneurysm and had to be immediately hospitalized. I I'm sorry for causing you so much trouble. Don't apologize. You just rest and focus on getting better, okay? Grandma ended up paralyzed on her right side from the waist down. And mom had to keep working while caring for the both of us. I'll do whatever I can to help too. Thank you, Ayani. At first, she was thankful for everything mom did and worked hard at her physical training. Satomi! Satomi! Oh, I'll help. But soon she gave up and started relying on mom for every tiny thing. Mom was constantly sleep deprived and wasn't doing well. Thanks. Eventually, she couldn't handle both working and caregiving, so she quit her job. She always used to have a smile on her face, but she had become emotionless and silent. Satomi! What is it, Grandma? Where's your mother, dear? She's a bit busy right now. Can I help? Get me that TV remote. She could easily reach over and get it herself. Here you are. Ah, uh, finally, I can watch some TV. She used to be so kind and caring. And then, one day, I was on my lunch break in school and my teacher came in and called for me. Ayane, there's a phone call for you. Huh? I got a sudden call from the police station. They told me Mom had gotten into a traffic accident and passed away. She'd been so tired that she ran a red light and drove straight into oncoming traffic. Mom! No! Satomi! Satomi! Grandma! Mom's not... She's not here anymore. Satomi! I was so worried about Grandma. I dropped out of school to take care of her full time. Thanks to public welfare and disability protection programs, I was able to get about $1,300 per month from the government. But almost all of that was spent on the home care workers and nurses. Today, the care worker's coming, okay? Okay, Satomi. It's me, Grandma. I'm Ayani. My mom had been taking care of Grandma for nine whole years. Would I be spending years or even decades of my life looking after her like this? Just thinking about it gave me a sinking fear in the pit of my stomach. I spent my nights in my grandma's room. She tended to wander off on her own, so I only got about two hours of decent sleep. But I knew well that not sleeping at all could lead to a serious lapse in judgment. Ugh. Huh? It's morning. How long was I out for? Grandma? I jumped up in a panic when I saw her lying in the bed. She'd already drawn her final breaths with a peaceful expression, like she was drifting into a dream. No. I couldn't believe I didn't notice her passing away right in front of me. I blamed myself. But more than that, I blamed the part of me deep down that felt even slightly relieved that she was gone. I was disgusted with myself. I tried to shift gears and focus on finding a job so, so I could live my own life. But there weren't any options open to a high school dropout with no experience like me. And not only that, 
If you can't pay your rent, I have no choice but to evict you. Please, I'm begging you. I promise I'll pay, just, just give me a little more time. I'm sorry, but I have to make a living too. I was soon kicked out of my apartment. I had no one to rely on, so I just started walking. And before I knew it, I was lost and shivering in the cold. I thought it was the end, and then I heard a voice calling to me. All of you were so nice to me. I don't even know what to say. You poor little thing. You've been through so much. Um, I'm really sorry, but is there any way you could find it in your heart to let me live and work here? You don't even have to pay me. All I ask is for a place to stay. That's all? You're more than welcome. Yeah, and don't be ridiculous. We'll pay you for your fair share. Just leave everything to us. Uh, I look forward to working with you. Okay. Two years after that? Huh? Ayane? What are you doing here dressed like that? Do you think I could stay here forever? What? I definitely noticed that Ayane was maturing into a beautiful woman. But that day three years ago, I never would have expected that she'd throw herself at me like this. You're always welcome here. You know that, right? You don't have to resort to something like this. But there's someone you were thinking of marrying, right? I heard Tokiko, the head hostess, talking about it. And after that, I'm sure you wouldn't need someone like me around anymore, right? You couldn't be any more wrong. First of all, you're an important part of our inn, and we couldn't live without you. But, but, I don't think I could accept someone else as the proprietress. Why not? Be because I'd be jealous. When I think about someone else being your wife, I get so angry. You're jealous? Yes. Why? Because ever since that snowy day when you found me three years ago, I've always been in love with you. I love you too, Ayane. Huh? The person I was thinking of marrying was you. Really? But, but why? I don't have any family. I'm homeless and penniless. No matter how you look at it, I'm just not right for you. Yeah, I've been watching you ever since you started working here, you know. You're serious, you're a hard worker, you take responsibility for yourself, and you're passionate about your job. Plus, you're honest and sincere, and you always have a smile on your face. All of that makes you an absolutely wonderful and beautiful person. Minato. You may think you have nothing, but as far as I can tell, you can do everything. I promise I'll never leave you wanting for anything. Will you marry me? Yes! Wow! Huh? Mr. and Mrs. Sakamori? We heard you two in here, and we got so curious. Sorry, we heard everything. Are you kidding me? It could have been bad if they showed up after I pounced on her. But, um... Well, are you really okay with someone like me becoming Minato's wife? And the eventual proprietress of this inn? Are you kidding me? Of course it's okay! It's more than welcome. Please take care of our harebrained son! I will! Thank you both for everything. And with my parents' blessing and the well-wishing of all the other staff, it was soon time for our wedding. I'm so proud, honey. Me too, dear. I promise I'll always make you happy. Just meeting you that day gave me all the happiness I'll ever need. I love you. I would have ever expected that calling out to the homeless person wandering in front of my inn would eventually culminate in the amazing feelings I'm blessed with now. I'll do whatever I can for her sake from now on so that she doesn't regret me finding her that day instead of anyone else. <laughs>